Good morning, YouTube. Fireman Scott here. It's a little after seven. I just got back from a long run in the cold and rain. My day started, I think, around 3.30, which is earlier than I wanted to, but I'm having, uh, I always have trouble with insomnia. But whenever I wake up, I decide I might as well make the most of it. That's where I come up with this goat things. It's like a, I, it's like training for me. I was in the army, so I, I believe in train like a fight and fight like a train. Um, I actually believe that I'm going to be the greatest poker player of all time. It's like I've zoomed out and seen it and zooming back in. I, I said, okay, wh what do I need to do to get there? And I thought, you have to work out hard every day. It's too important for your mental and for your body physically. And uh, so that's what I do every day. And uh, this day is no different. Click subscribe. Thank you. Go thanks. Welcome back everybody to the second part of my last PLO session at Prime. I tried to tell a good story. So in my last session, I showed you how I was down $600 and I was trying to get focused and see if I could pull out a win. But honestly, I was never in any danger of losing. I love this table. It's perfectly set up for me to win. Everybody's deep stacked. I've raised every hand. I've got everybody right where I want them. I raised this one with Ace Jack 10-10. A suited ace, of course, and boom, nine high flop, two spades. This hand is beautiful for several reasons. One, I like to bet nine high flops. People are always afraid that I have nines. Also, I have the nut flush draw. I also have two tens in my hand, blocking anybody who might draw it a straight here. Also, I've got a gut shot straight draw myself. So, raise this one up, get a bunch of collars, pot it. Everybody thinks we still got the two math whizzes from Texas A&M here. Same group of guys and still Mr. GTO Dan Smeek. Nine, eight, six, deuce, double suited. Not the most beautiful double suited rundown in the world, but there has been an early position raise from a player named Vicky. She has a lot of chips, so does everybody, and she doesn't have that much experience. Neither does anybody else compared to me, so I don't miss that, this opportunity. I re-raise it here, and I force Vicky to now play a big, deep stacked pot against me, and we also get another caller. This guy has already expressed his frustration because he's just two spots to the right of me, and every time he's raised it, I've re-raised him, I've hammered every flop, and um, I've mixed it up with him in the, last in the last episode, and he's a little frustrated with me right now, so it's set up perfectly. I'm ready to work under pressure. Let's build a big pot. Let's go to the flop. Jack four deuce, I potted it up. I love this hand. I have bottom pair and a club draw, but more importantly, with a four and a deuce on the board, it's unlikely to have hit Vicky's hand, she makes the fold, and the other guy shows his frustration again with me. Here's me checking out my own Instagram page. You can too. You can watch my daily story on Instagram if you follow me at fireman underscore scott99. Look down at king queen seven eight one suit. 
and that suit is hearts. I'm raising up this hand just like I'm raising every hand. I love this table. Here we go, boys. I get a call from one of the Aggies and from my frustrated friend. I flop top two pair. They both check to me and I bet $80, which is 80% of the pot. Seems reasonable. They both call. And at this point, there probably aren't many turns at all that are gonna be great for my hand. Hoping for something low like a deuce or a three maybe when they both call. I really am not in love with it, especially when it comes and ace of spades. Everybody shuts down and checks the turn. Aggie bets the river and he gets snap called by this other dude and I just throw the hand away. Look, some of these hands aren't that exciting, but they're the hands that I actually played. This is my life. This is the only ones I can show you at the moment. Hopefully someday I'll have a huge catalog of years worth of films, uh, fa hands being filmed, but this is all I have so far is whatever I played. So, flop top two pair, let out and bet, got two callers, came a bad run out, so folded. Okay guys, before I set up this next hand and before we talk about why I only run it once, first I would ask you to please click subscribe, click like, click notify so you will always know when the next vlog comes out. I really appreciate all the support. Comment in the comment section, let me know what you like, what you don't like, and I hope I can continue to make this vlog even better. Now, so there's several reasons why I run it once. One big reason, and it was a big reason of why I would dominate all the underground games was because they always offered insurance. And just to make it simple for you, this is basically how it went. If there's three of us playing at the table, and one guy wins a third of the hands, another guy wins a third of the hands, and, the other, and I win a third of the hands. Well, in Houston, when they offer insurance, these other two guys, when they would win their hands, they would get to the turn and they would lock up insurance and give half of the money or give part of the money back to me. And then when I would win a hand, I wouldn't take insurance and I would just win a huge pot. So basically, every time I win a pot, I win all the money and every time they win a pot, they would give me back some of my money. So it was a win-win always for me. So I always ran it once in the underground rooms, but that's not the only reason. Another reason I run it once and the main reason I run it once is because my game is all about pressure, applying pressure to somebody. And when I get somebody in a big pressure spot, when I have a game built up how I want it built up, when I get a moment where I have a big draw or I have the best hand and I want to really step on somebody's throat, I'm not going to give them two chances. You want to go twice? I just go once, bud. I don't even remember how this whole hand played out. I didn't get the whole thing filmed. If I filmed every hand, the internet would explode. Bottom line, I flopped a diamond draw and a gutter ball. I get it all in with the Aggie, even though he practically begged me not to call, told me he had the nuts. I'm in there trying to step on your throat, go for the jugular, kill you in one big pot. That's what I do. Ship it. You're on the vlog now. It's too late. You're on it now. <laughs> it's never a good ending. Raise the third. No, I live here. Okay, at this point, I'm trying to just keep it light, but everyone at the table is a little tense at this point. Why? Because I have a lot of chips. I'm in for 1600 and I have about 45, 4600 at this point. I'm keeping it loose. I'm raising every pot still. I'm very comfortable, but they are not. Everybody has a lot of chips now and it's a little bit scary for them. I've expressed the fact that I will play any four cards at any time from any position and I've showed that I will run it one time and I can kill you in just one big pot. So everybody is treading lightly. Here I just have bottom two, 
the Aggie bets into it, and I think for a minute about messing around with him, but I just let it go. Like I said, I can only show you the hands that I actually played. Okay, in this hand, I'm not going to show you my whole cards. I actually ran out of battery in my camera in the middle of the hand, so Vicky will be placed with the decision at the end of this hand, and if you want to see the rest of it, go to my Instagram page that I mentioned earlier at fireman underscore scott 99. Let me set this one up for you. I make it 30, like always, get several callers, like always, and the flop comes ace, jack, deuce, rainbow, I check, and it comes a 10 of clubs on the turn. When all the players check to me again, I pot it, and Miss Vicky goes into the tank for a minute. Vicky makes the call here and we go heads up to the river which comes in nine of diamonds. She checks it to me and I blast full pot. I'll go ahead and tell you now, guys, she has three pair. What do you think she should do? What do I have? Go check it out on that Instagram page. Click on John Wayne and you will see the rest of the hand. Poker is a game of high pressure situations. When I was 21, I was in the army leading grown men with machine guns down dark alleyways in third world countries looking for other grown men with machine guns. When I was in the fire department, 10 years in the Houston fire department, crawling on my hands and knees into fire, fighting an enemy, a living, breathing enemy that was trying to kill me. I was looking and seeking for the patterns. Math, ca or math calculations on a pump panel on fire engines when my buddies and civilians' lives were on the line inside fighting a fire. Here, we're just playing poker. This ain't no pressure to me. It is to everybody else, but it isn't to me because I train for it every day. I do goat things every day. I will show you some charts. I will show you and talk through some poker hands with you. But more importantly, I can show you how to be a real player, how to get you used to operating in these high pressure, high pressure situations. Follow me on social media if you would like to train with me. Click subscribe. Thank you.